as famine and drought gripped Somalia in what's being called the worst humanitarian disaster in the world right now. The Nation magazine has revealed the CIA is greatly expanding its covert operations inside Somalia. Following an in-depth on-the-ground investigation inside Mogadishu, the magazine revealed the agency has set up a secret counterterrorism training base at the International Airport in Somalia, where it's training an indigenous Somali force to conduct targeted combat and capture operations against members of al-Shabaab, the militant group with close ties to al-Qaeda. The nation has also revealed the CIA is using a secret underground prison in the basement of Somalia's National Security Agency. While a U.S. official told the nation that the CIA does not run the prison, he acknowledged the CIA pays the salaries of Somali agents. Some of the prisoners in the prison have been snatched on the streets of Nairobi, Kenya, and rendered to Mogadishu. The revelations come as the Joint Special Operations Command, known as JSOC, has increased its targeted killing operations inside Somalia. On June 23rd, JSOC forces targeted an alleged Shabab convoy and then landed inside Somalia to collect the bodies. We're joined now by Jeremy Scahill, the national security correspondent for The Nation magazine. He's just returned from Mogadishu, Somalia. He's a longtime Democracy Now! correspondent. His story in this week's Nation magazine is called The CIA's Secret Sites in Somalia. Jeremy, talk about what you found in Somalia. Well, um, I, I traveled to Somalia with uh, with Rick Rowley from Big Noise Films, a, a filmmaker, and, uh, and we were there for, uh, for about 10 days. Um, and we were investigating the institution of targeted killing um, that is increasingly present in the U.S. national security strategy, particularly under President Obama. Um, and, uh, and, and when we arrived in Mogadishu within days, we discovered uh, that the CIA had just finished construction of a, a pretty massive compound uh, at the Aden Ade International Airport in Mogadishu. Um, and, uh, and the compound, which is, is uh, not even hidden in plain sight, it's just in plain sight, uh, looks like a gated community. It has about a dozen buildings inside of it, brand new. Uh, it's a walled compound with, uh, with guard posts at, all of its, at each of its four corners. It's right on the banks of the Indian Ocean. Um, and then next to it, there are uh, uh, six or eight uh, small hangars, and the, the CIA also has its own aircraft there. Um, I was able to, uh, to track down a senior Somali intelligence official and began the process of investigating this facility. And what I discovered is that the CIA is training uh, in what was described to me as an indigenous uh, strike force, uh, members of Somalia's National Security Agency, its intelligence division, um, to conduct operations in the areas controlled by the Shabab in Mogadishu. And, and you know, it, the, the situation is very fluid, but the Shabab control a huge portion of Mogadishu. And the internationally recognized government uh, controls about 30 square miles of territory. Um, when I asked a very prominent businessman who works in the port of Mogadishu who controls the rest, he said the Shabab government um, and, and, and referred to it as such. And everyone says that if the, the 9,000 troops from Uganda and Burundi that are there as part of the African Union were to pull out, that the Shabab would take over in in, you know, minutes, if not seconds. Um, and, and so we discovered that the CIA was expanding its operations there. But then I also met a, uh, a man who claimed that he had been uh, held in an underground prison in the basement of the National Security Agency, which is one of the facilities where the CIA has its personnel, and it's literally behind the presidential palace in Vila Somalia, which is the semi-fortified area where the where Somalia's transitional federal government, the U.S.-backed government, is based. Um, and he described to me that he had seen prisoners inside of this and talked to prisoners inside of this basement um, dungeon who had been there for 18 months or more. There were people that he described as young boys um, inside the prison, old men, uh, described uh, infestation of bed bugs and mosquitoes, no windows. Prisoners are never allowed to see the light of day, and people are literally going crazy in the basement of this prison. And he said that he had seen both U.S. and French agents, white men, um, interrogating prisoners, and that some of the prisoners claimed that they had been snatched in neighboring Kenya um, and brought, rendered, um, to Somalia. And, uh, and so I, I started that investigation, and, and more sources came forward when I was in Mogadishu um, to describe this and confirmed that this, that CIA personnel and possibly U.S. military intelligence personnel uh, are interrogating prisoners. Uh, held in that basement facility. Um, we found one man in particular, the case of one man in particular, named uh, uh, Ahmed Abdullahi Hassan, 
who was a 25- or 26-year-old Kenyan of Somali descent, but he's a Kenyan citizen, who was snatched from his home in July of 2009. And his lawyers allege that he was rendered to Somalia, and they said that it had all the hallmarks of a U.S. rendition. So I investigated that case and what I learned, and in fact, what uh, I can't say where the U.S. official worked because they wouldn't allow us to report it, but let's just say a U.S. official very familiar with these operations acknowledged uh, the case of Ahmed Abdullahi Hassan, said to me directly, the U.S. did not render him. And I said, well, we're not alleging that the U.S. rendered him. We're alleging that the Kenyans rendered him. You, you have to understand, in, in 2007 alone, the Kenyans rendered 85 Somalis, or excuse me, 85 people from Kenya to Somalia on behalf of the U.S. and other governments, including Ethiopia. So there's a, there is a long pattern here of the U.S. using proxy forces such as the Kenyans to do these renditions. So the U.S. doesn't have to put them on the plane itself. But the U.S. official acknowledged that the U.S. provided the Kenyans with the intelligence that led to Hassan, quote, being taken off the streets. So, so the, the, the U.S. is playing semantics with this. It's clear that they made it abundantly clear they wanted him removed from the game, and he was swiftly abducted, hooded, taken to Wilson Airport, and then rendered to Mogadishu. This man was identified in a, an intelligence report that's believed to be a U.S. intelligence report that was leaked by Kenya's anti-terrorism police unit. Uh, he was identified as the right-hand man of Ali Nabhan who was, uh, was one of the most wanted uh, suspects regarding um, East Africa uh, that the U.S. was pursuing. He was wanted for questioning in, uh, over his alleged connection to the 2002 bombings in Kenya that targeted a hotel and an Israeli aircraft uh, that was parked at the airport in Mombasa. Uh, two months after Hassan was snatched off the streets of Kenya, President Obama authorized his first targeted killing in Somalia and killed Ali Nabhan, the man that Hassan was allegedly the right-hand man to. So the U.S. role in that case uh, seems very, very clear. As far as the interrogations go inside of this basement prison, the U.S. official that was made available to me for this story said that the U.S. does not directly interrogate prisoners. We jointly uh, debrief suspects with Somali agents present. Uh, again, it's all a semantic game. Um, and, uh, and, and insisted that it's only happened a few times uh, in, what is in the, the past year. Of this? In January of 2009, President Obama signed a series of executive orders that uh, were intended to end the uh, practices uh, that President Bush and Vice President Cheney had implemented in the war on terror that candidate Obama had denounced on the campaign trail torture, secret prisons, uh, renditions. And uh, CIA Director Leon Panetta said in April 2009 that the U.S. was in the process of uh, decommissioning all of its secret uh, prison sites. Two months later, Hassan is rendered to a secret prison uh, in Somalia. Is it your sense that, uh, for example, the ICRC, the International Red Cross, knows about this, is going in and visiting the prisoners? <laughs> there's no Red Cross in, in Mogadishu. There's no one in Mogadishu. There's no, there's no aid agencies. No one will go there. Um, there you know, prison visits? No. There's not even a you know, food distribution program that has any Westerners on the ground. They just—all the, all of the white Westerners are, are hiding inside of Amazon's compound, the African Union compound, and Mogadishu is left to suffer completely. It is the most horrifying scene I've ever seen in my life. The prisoners held there, not only do they not see the Red Cross, they are not ever presented with charges. There is no court system to, to speak of at all in Mogadishu. Um, and, you know, the U.S. can say, can talk until it's blue in the face about how this isn't a, a secret U.S. prison, and at the same time confirm that they pay the salaries of the people that run those prisons and are running Somalia's intelligence. It was described to me how the, the CIA does not trust the Somali government, which is regularly denounced by the U.S. as corrupt and unable to control its own territory. So they literally, every month, the CIA lines up the Somali agents and pays them $200 in cash. So, so how is it that you can say, this isn't our secret prison, we're, we're, just, we're just there? And, the, you know, the, the, CNN then, the CNN gets spun by the CIA yesterday, after my story comes out. And they say, well, the Somalis assure us that they're treating the prisoners humanely. You're paying their salaries. You know, that, 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 that is using that site at a minimum. 
Jeremy Scaho, you write the CIA presence in Mogadishu is part of Washington's intensifying counterterrorism focus on Somalia, which includes targeted strikes by U.S. Special Operations Forces, drone attacks, and expanded surveillance operations. Right. Well, as I said, you know, Pre President Obama has made Somalia and Yemen major focus uh, points of his. Uh, continuation of the Bush era doctrine that the world is a battlefield and we have the right to kill anyone that we deem to be a terrorist at any time that we want in any country around the world. Uh, started, started his targeted killing operation authorizations, as, as far as we know, in September of 2009. And just in the past uh, month, there have been a number of U.S. strikes inside of Somalia. There was the June 23rd strike that you mentioned, uh, where, uh, a air, where strikes were conducted against a convoy that allegedly was uh, was uh, headed by Shabab members. And then JSOC forces land on the ground and collect the bodies. They did the same thing with the Ali Nabhan hit in 2009. JSOC landed inside the country and took his body um, for verification. Then uh, that it was him. Then on July 6th, there were three more U.S. strikes um, in uh, another area of Somalia called Kismayo, which is about 300 miles away from uh, Mogadishu. Uh, and you have—I uh, also was told by a very senior Somali official, and I'm going to be writing about this in the coming uh, weeks, that JSOC actually has forces on the ground uh, that are directly targeting Shabab, not just flying in and hitting them, but actually on the ground conducting operations. But I have to say, though, that while we can talk about the expanded presence of the CIA and this counterterrorism program, uh, as far as the Somali agents are concerned, it's been a tremendous failure. Uh, the only time that they've attempted uh, a targeted operation inside of a Shabab-controlled area in Mogadishu was late last year. And it was described to me as a categorical disaster where the Somali agents were killed, and they haven't tried another operation since. Um, so I think that the CIA is certainly operating in what is perhaps the most uh, dangerous and unstable environment that it operates in. Um, and we're clearly increasing the amount we're spending on it um, and the amount of personnel that we're allocating to it. But to what effect is, is really unclear. Jeremy, AP reported this. A federal judge reacted skeptically to the Obama uh, administration's request to dismiss a lawsuit by an American citizen who says he was held in Africa for four months and allegedly interrogated more than 30 times by U.S. officials. Amir Mohammed Mashal, a Muslim man living in Tinton Falls, New Jersey, said he was subjected to unlawful rendition from Kenya to Somalia and Ethiopia, carried out at the behest of U.S. officials. Right. I, if, if that case is from 2007, the, the, the story there was that the, the United States backed a Ethiopian invasion of Somalia to unseat a coalition of groups that called themselves the Islamic Courts Union that had taken control of Mogadishu, defeating the CIA's warlords, who operated effectively as a death squad. Um, and they brought some semblance of order to Mogadishu. Um, they were ruthless, but they brought order to Mogadishu and were widely seen as the sort of most stable people that had taken power since the regime of Siad Bari was, was brought down in 1991, and then the Black Hawk Down incident happened. Um, and the, the U.S., uh, of course, you know, took a position under the Bush administration that an Islamic government was not acceptable, and, um, and they backed an Ethiopian invasion. And then JSOC went in and also did targeted killing operations. So many Somalis began to flee the Ethiopian invasion. And the Kenyans, in particular, uh, along with the Ethiopians, um, started just mass rend renditions, um, where they were snatching people uh, off the streets and then sending them to um, either Mogadishu or um, another uh, area of Somalia where there was a secret prison called, uh, called Baidoa. Um, I, I interviewed a, a former Islamic warlord who uh, JSOC tried to kill in 2007. He was then um, abducted by Americans inside of Somalia and rendered to Ethiopia and held by the Ethiopians for two years, um, despite the fact that the U.S. backed this invasion that really radically worsened the situation. The current president of Somalia, uh, Sheikh Sharif Sheikh Ahmed, uh, is a former leader of the Islamic Courts Union, and he now is backed by the United States. So, uh, it, you know, it all comes full circle, and, and U.S. policy has if anything, strengthened uh, the role of al-Shabaab, who—they were, mi were minor players within this Islamic Courts Union. 
the U.S. and Ethiopian response made them the premier militants on the block. Mm. We're going to go to break, then come back and also talk about the famine that is engulfing Somalia, the drought. Jeremy Scahill with us. The CIA's secret sites in Somalia is his expose in The Nation magazine this week. Stay with us.